all you ones. This is Miss Gigi coming at you again with another juicy episode. Let's get straight into it. In my last video, um, how to have a conversation with your, your lover, a sapiosexual conversation, the video ended with me going into deal breakers. Because when you're on a date with someone, when you're with your lover spending quality time, you also want to discuss deal breakers. This needs to be discussed in a relationship because in order for the other person to understand you what not to do, this conversation needs to be, needs to be said. This also comes from knowing yourself, but you need to express this deal breakers going forward so that you can have a healthy, productive relationship, healthy relationship. Let's get straight into it. Um, the deal breaker I was talking about um, before the video ended was smoking. Um, because I'm a former smoker of 18 years and I started smoking right, right in college, I guess when things started getting stressful hard. And so smoking, uh, black and miles and certain little cigars became a coping mechanism for the stress. Well, I detoxed my body in 2021 after 18 plus years with the Dr. Sabi and I'm on the Dr. Sabi diet also I stopped eating meat as well and so I detox the toxins out of my body and I just feel so much better and I breathe better and so it's just um and I can you know hold my breath for 30 seconds you know I I my lungs is healthier like I cannot be around someone that smokes like it's just not going to be a good fit for me it's it's not a healthy habit to pick up but like I said, it was a coping mechanism. Number two, body hair. Oh, God. Oh. Hair on the chest, the back, the legs, and the groin. Now, the reason why I don't like hair on the groin is because I like to sexually gratify my man. I'm just going to put it, I'm just going to be out there. I'm going to be open and honest. But I don't like hair down there. So, um, I do like uh, a beard and I do like mustache, but I don't like uh, hair anywhere else. Um, extreme political views, like, and you like aggressive with it, like you were really, really Republican. You are a diehard Republican. You are a diehard liberal and all that. Like, if you're too extreme with your political views, it's going to be a very awkward, um, we we're not gonna have um. We're, we're, it's gonna be awkward to converse have a conversation with you, um. Someone that's that's not healed from your past relationships. Like you keep constantly bringing up the past. Like you have trust issues. If I discover that you have trust issues, that's a deal breaker. We don't have to keep having this conversation. You're not gonna make me feel like your emotional support pet. Um, emotional support pet. You're not gonna keep crying on me because hurt people hurt people, and then I I. I can't trust you. So you need to be healed. If you're unhealed, that's a deal breaker for me. Um, addiction to drugs and alcohol. My my ex was an alcoholic. He was abusive, my second husband. So I don't like um out the smell of alcohol. I smelt it so much till it just burned my nose. And you know the type of alcoholic, you know, when you can smell it in, out of your on your pores, when it's coming out of your pores, it's a very foul smell so that's what i don't like people that overly drink like that like i'll have a, a beer or two but if you drink excessively we cannot uh it's not a good idea uh unemployment like you have no career goals like um if you're lazy like unambitious like that's a that's a personal turn off so you need to understand your your spouse why is this a turn off and this is how you need to address these issues uh, uh, pet deal breakers. Now, there are other deal breakers in relationships that need to be addressed. Um, selfishness. Selfishness is always like it's always, you know, in a relationship, it's a two way street, but you always seem to make it about yourself and what you need. And you demand your partner to show up, but then you don't show up for them. And it's, it's always, about you, but you have no consideration for how other people feel. So that's 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 a deal breaker. Num number two, lying, lying about your partners, and lying about um, 
lying to your partners about you know where you're going your stories that you add where you come from and where you're going like stuff that you you it's not adding up it's called co cognitive dissonance it's where your ideas don't match the last lie you told um abuse any form of abuse is not acceptable mental abuse physical abuse emotional abuse financial abuse sexual abuse or verbal abuse none of these are tolerable Anger. If you have anger issues, it's better to live on the corner of a rooftop of a house than to live in a house with a brawling, contentious woman. Anger rests in the bosoms of fools. Short tempers can can make a person uncomfortable to live with. I mean, you feel like you make you feel like you're walking around on eggshells. You know, you full of anxiety. You become self conscious, which lowers your self esteem, and you you become judgmental and critical of yourself, and you feel like nothing you do is right. Which can, you know, pretty much result in this person harming you in order to control you. That's why they're angry. Anger controls people. Cheating. Now, this is definitely a devastating emotional, uh, devastating emotional abuse, and it's not acceptable and it's risky behavior for contracting diseases and unwanted outside pregnancies and dissipating a, a marital assets. You know, wasting the money that needs to be spent on bills for that short-lived affair to take care of that woman. You know, don't that's that's not acceptable. Number six, drug and alcohol abuse, which could definitely lead to violence because if you're, you're trying to tell that person don't drink, don't don't use drugs like that, and you try to take it from them or withhold money from them, they can attack you and they're going to lead to them stealing money from you. Lack of ambition. If, you, if you're not achieving any, if you're a high achiever and you keep growing and evolving in a relationship and you're going higher and you're going to the next level and your partner has no aim to do more and then, you know, you... They don't want to go to work and they're overly dependent on you. And this will end badly because you're going to outgrow the relationship. And then that person is going to just feel like, uh, you can take care of me. That's fine. You know, I, 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 I let you take care of me. You're going to get tired of it. You're going to get worn out and exhausted. Number eight, is your partner, you know, materialistic? Always materialistic can, can destroy a relationship. You wanting a house, an expensive car, jewelry, designer clothes, designer handbags. You see your partner as a cash cow or a bag. And you feel like this person is looking for a come up. You, you know, she using me. They want to live off you. And then the relationship, you need to know this. If the person is too materialistic, the relationship will last as long as they can get material gain out of you. As long as they can get them exotic trips and vacations and shopping sprees and fancy restaurants and expensive trips to the hair salon. Uh, yeah, it'll only last as long as you got your good job and you keep that money coming in. But as soon as that money start looking funny, they don't leave. It's over. The relationship is over. You just know that. Number nine, do you want kids or not? Like, are you on the same page with wanting kids? Because one partner can want kids and the other person does not. And that can lead to a, a, a argument. And then it's like issues when when kids constrain on one partner's career and if a partner, one partner is at the, at the stage in their life, like I don't want kids right now. I want to travel and just work and, and just work and then travel. That's it. That's where my life is at. And then the man is like, well, I want more kids and I want you to stay at home. And it's like, that's going to lead to an argument and a career strain. And no, no, no. It's going to lead to uh, the relationship's going to end badly too. Finances. Number 10. If one partner is more successful than the other and the burden of caring for the family finances is on his shoulders, then he's going to feel tired of doing that, too. Um, you know, without your contribution. The lack of proper money management. Are you always in debt, spending up the credit cards? Is there too much medical bills, too much expenses or... Is he always buying something, going shopping and clothes, shoes, just overly spending? And then you have a financial, you know, you have a, a, a saver mindset. Like, we need to save, save, save. And he's like, nah, we got to spend a little bit. That's going to lead to an argument. Number 11, being too cheap, being too frugal, budget-minded, always haggling, always wanting a discount, always looking for a deal. That's going to just make you feel like you don't appreciate paying full price for the product and you always feel like you you don't have no respect for what you're paying for and you always want a deal or always wanting something cheap that could also get aggravating it's like you can't appreciate the product because you always want to if you want the product you got to pay the price and it's like why do i keep arguing with you it's like you don't feel like i'm worth the price if they tell you it's five hundred dollars and you want to haggle down 
then you don't feel like I'm worthy of that. And you always want something cheap. You want to invest. You want more for less. I got to go. This is ridiculous. Always arguing about price. It's going to result in you don't see me as worthy. That's how that's going to turn out. Poor hygiene. Take care of your body maintenance. Shave and bathe often. Shave your beard and your mustache and shave your legs and your armpits so that you can just, you know, always smell good and look good, you know, on the outside. Body hair, you know, hair on the chest and back and legs and groin. Some some women find it just like the hair, but just keep it short and neat and trimmed and you're good. Other than that, it's a deal breaker and the relationship can end because of poor hygiene. Jealousy. <laughs> Extremely jealous is toxic. Number 13. You know, always public showing PDA, like kissing your man in front of a group of girls or when you're out with your friends and your family, you're always all over your spouse because you don't want someone, if you see someone, another woman looking at your man, all of a sudden you want to go over there and, and get next to him because you see him looking at her and then all of a sudden he wants to be all over you. Um, that's going to that's gonna result in, and then you always say, why is he looking at you? There's an argument. Then why are you looking at her? Why are you looking at another woman? And all being all jealous like that. You can't talk to a person of an opposite sex if he thinks something's going on. And, you know, it's like, this is, this is going to be exhausting. This is a, this is a red flag. It needs to be addressed. And this is a deal breaker. Um, it's also, this person does not celebrate your wins. They don't celebrate your accomplishments and your career or in your work, like you got a promotion at work, you got a raise, or you got an award for something, you know, recognized for something, and they're not happy for you. This is jealousy, and this could be this could be considered. You need to cut the relationship off. This is a deal breaker. Number fourteen, too controlling. They make you feel suffocated. Always got to call. Always got to check in constantly. Always sending text messages. Always wanting to be around you and you can't go unless I tell you to, you know, always being too controlling, always interrupting what you got going on. Religion. Do you have different religious beliefs or values? Um, this serves as a foundation in a relationship as far as raising kids as well. So um, some people use relationship as a weapon and, and in order to do what they say or, you know, so you got to watch how they're using it. How is religion being addressed in the relationship? If it's if it's a spiritual abuse, that's a deal breaker. The relationship's going to end very badly. And then you're going to also lose faith. So I hope that you're all on the same page as far as uh, religion goes. Number 16. This is a pet peeve of mine. Clinky. Um, we need our own individuality. We need time and space. Um, you need a hobby. Do not make me your sole focal point. You know, you have to have, you have to be aware there are 24 hours in a day. We got to plan accordingly in order to meet up because I'm going to do me. I got my own um, activities outside of this relationship and outside of work. You need to also find a hobby outside of the relationship, outside of work. Do not make me your focal point. It's going to end badly. I'm going to get annoyed and you're going to be mad. I'm going to let you down because I'm going to be disappointed. I'm going to disappoint you. I'm going to let you down because I'm busy. I'm busy with my hobby and then you're you're not. So that's not that's not going to work. Number 17, do your medical issues. You know, God forgive me, but I'm just not getting with someone who has a host of medical issues. You know, this is a Debbie Downer, which is going to lead me to me feeling sorry for you for being your nurse. And I don't want to be someone's nurse or emotional support pet in this season of my life. I'm just not doing all this whining and crying about your health issues and I'm getting depressed and exhausted and feeling anxiety, my nerves on edge, caring for your needs and wears me down and and you know, you got diabetes and 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 high blood pressure, low blood pressure, cholesterol and and, and all these other medical illnesses it's like too much it's like prescription pill i could prescription i got prescription you got therapy bills and just uh, that's a turn off and that is that it's like you know what i'm better off alone number 18 low sex drive mm, i love to have sex as many times during the week as possible day and night especially midnight now Okay, I how you need to discuss how often you want to have sex with your partner and how frequently, day or night, and cuddling and foreplay, I'm all for it. But is your partner for it? Is he meeting you on the same page? 
And if he's not on the same page as you sexually, it's going to lead to the relationship falling apart. Number 19, poor communication. Having, I was talking about sapiosexual conversation because you have to get to know each other's connection, get to know each other um, on an emotional level, to understand each other's needs and why they think the way they do, especially learning your partner's love language. Love language is uh, words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, gifts, acts of service. It's fivelovelanguages.com. You need to learn your partner's love language so that you can properly communicate your needs with them. Negative attitude, number 20. If your partner always complaining, negative, just seeing the bad in everything, never the good, just a victim. Something is always happening to you. You're never happy. It's always finding the worst in other people. Always something wrong, picking on somebody, laughing on somebody else. It's like, you know what? This, these are deal breakers that can destroy a relationship. And I need you to openly be honest when communicating with your spouse, with your lover about your deal breakers. And you have to learn how to compromise and make it work for both of you so that you both can have a healthy relationship moving forward. No one is perfect. Only the Lord is perfect, but you can strive to be better and communicate better. Meet me in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Any of these deal breakers resonate with you? Do you have new deal breakers that can be added to this list to help the royal ones in the dating scheme? Meet me in the comment section. Let's have this conversation. Thank you so much for listening to this message. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe. Love, puzzle, and kisses. Bye.